Uh, I'm Mike Johnson from LP Archaeology. Uh, thank the other people whose names are on this paper, Lisa Fentress and uh, Andrew Dufton, who are taking their take on this same question to CAA and Siena. Um, but I've been consulting with them on the, on the ARC from LP Archaeology. Um, so it's a big question, uh, this sustainable publication and web. Um, I'll explain to you first what the, the ARC is. Um, you might have seen them before. It's essentially a web front end for a relational database. It sits on top of MySQL and it runs in PHP and then there's a whole bunch of configuration and CSS files and you can make it look like a lot of the different things. These are some examples of ones that we have running live at the moment. Um, and these are great. <coughs> And people use them in the field for collecting data, and people use them to deal with data that has been already collected and sort of post-process that and present it. Um, it's, a, it's really good for that. The problem we keep coming back to, or that has been brought up, is what do we do with all that data after it's been collected? Now, we just heard from the ADS, and they do a lot of really good stuff with uh, sort of uh, flat files. They do great stuff with great literature. It's really exciting, like the proper crunchy things you do with all the NLP. But that's very difficult to do with the ARCs, who have this sort of dynamic access point. It's the, the deep web. So when you look at it, most of the actual information is hidden. So this is a map of um, Plasti, which is one of the other ARCs. Um, working on the same infrastructure, but it's, as you can see, this, it's more of a network of ideas. It makes it more difficult to store that. I mean, we could just export our MySQL database, but that isn't actually what the ARC is. Without the configuration files, you lose it. Oh, so we can archive the configuration files, and that's fine, but then you lose the actual software that puts those two things together. So. That's a problem. But maybe we're looking at this the wrong way, because what do we actually want when we say we want these websites to be sustainable? Well, we want something that's a persistent URL. We want something where, where you say, I want to go and look at the Prescott Street, what they had. You want to go there, and you want to see something that is what they were talking about or what has been referenced. So that's cool. Maybe we could do that. The sort of P-U-R-L of pearls. And then there's something that we could do. Accessible resources. So this is, accessible is an interesting word because it means two different things depending on your context. Probably a lot more depending on who you ask. But the ones that I like are accessible is you can get at it. And accessible is also this idea of accessibility that anyone can get at it. So something we ran into with the, um, one of our other arcs at 100 Minaries just the other day. It looks really good on your Mac display with the retina. But if you go onto it on Internet Explorer version 8 or so on a Windows machine, suddenly everything looks a little bit less snappy. Um, now, the date is the same, but is that the same website you're looking at? Probably. Um, and we did some stuff, and now it doesn't look so bad on uh, Internet Explorer. And if you're still using Internet Explorer 8, Maybe we don't want you to look at our website now, of course we do. Um, and then preservation and sustainability. We want to keep doing this. We want to look at this stuff indefinitely, which is maybe a bit <laughs> ambitious, but I think we should at least imagine that we're not going to have a sell-by date on all of this. So what's the problems with all this? Well. The underlying technology that the ARC sits on is changing. It's all changing, not just the software, but the hardware. The, the apocryphal story, this like campfire tale that digital archaeologists tell each other about the newer archive, which is this, well, I don't know, it depends which version you heard, is this shoebox filled with floppy disks, of which most is now completely unreadable. Um, and that's terrifying, this idea that we're meticulously gathering all of this information on our fancy browser-based collection techniques or on tablets or whatever, 
And then at the end of the day, 10 years down the line, it's just going to be a shoebox filled with floppy disks somewhere. And that's, that's terrifying. And also, we have to think about institutions are changing. So LP Archaeology look after a lot of these arcs at the moment. Several universities have their own, and they look after them, and that's great. Um, we can trust them. Can we trust LP Archaeology? I think so, but I'm biased. So, one possible solution is that we keep everything that has happened. Is that this is the, the Wayback Machine, which um, is a great resource, and this is Fasty since it started almost 10 years ago. 10 years ago? Um, I think that makes it slightly older than Facebook, about the same age. And so they've got all these snapshots through. It looks great, but again, this is that deep web thing that I mentioned before. You can look at all of the front pages, but the, all the data, the Wayback Machine hasn't crawled them very well. So it's all sort of disappeared. Although none of it's actually disappeared. If you go to Fasty now, it's all still exactly there. It's just, it's not the Fasty that was in 2004. Does, is that sustainable? Is that the same website? I think it probably is. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of what my, my point here is, is that looking at snapshotting all these websites, looking at keeping the, the actual appearance of it isn't the answer. What we're really focusing on when we say we want this stuff to stay is that we want to keep the ideas, we want to keep the data, we want to keep the links, and we want to keep what it means. And none of that's tied up in the technology. Um, although it's all presented through the technology, it's much, much easier now than it has been ever before to keep things moving forward into new technologies. So we have to look at the solutions that we have, which are open source. ARC has been open source for the whole time, which is great. This is absolutely essential because it's the only way that we can hope to keep these arcs keeping on. So they are, well, they are all being developed by different people. LP have theirs, and there's also the ones that are out there, and all of them are using the same code base. And all of them, at the end of the day, if you were to get those files that I said before, that database and those config, you could then put, to, put it back together. Maybe that's not the solution. I don't know. It's another thing about ongoing releases. So open source, we've been releasing this fairly regularly, probably once every couple of years. Underneath it, you see that MySQL have had, well, they've gone from 4.1 to 5.7 during the lifespan of ARC. PHP, the other language that they use, has gone from 4.2 to 5.7 underneath ARC. ARC is now on version well, we're looking at putting out 1.2 fairly soon. Um, and so that's fine. These new things keep going. And that's the sort of sustainability that we can hope for on the web. And that's a completely different kind of sustainability than we look at in other places. Um, and then the other sort of... So yeah, if we look at um, social media, is something that I mentioned before, that ARC is as old as Facebook. Nobody would say that the Facebook that you looked at 10 years ago looks the same as the Facebook you look at now. But no one would say that Facebook lost any of your data. No one would say that Facebook isn't sustainable, and no one would say that it isn't a format which is going to continue. I think people trust it. Obviously, businesses trust it, and it's, it's something we can look at and say, Maybe we're worrying about the wrong things when we say, <coughs> oh, should we save this as a, an Excel file or do we save it as a, an open uh, database? It's, it's sort of not a problem. As long as you can keep things moving forward, as long as you can keep things active, then that cuts it down. And this is linked data. So keeping something active involves getting it from one format into another format. Um, which is something we're now looking at doing a lot more, again, through the Ariadne project, which uh, was mentioned by the ADS. We are also one of the partners in that through Fasti. 
Uh, so this is what we've been working on as part of the app, um, which is the Fasty Concepts page. And this is the sort of thing that you see a lot of. This is just the web viewable, sort of human readable version on the web. There's also, it's being served in um, uh, JSON, and I think there's plans to have it served in some other formats as well. This is mapping our ideas of what things are stored in our database to the AAT, which I think was uh, the spine that our AAT is going to use. So that when we say we mean something, we mean something that other people mean by it. It's, it's going to make it much easier to move this data around. ARC has had since the very start the ability to export all of its data into a couple of different formats. We're working on new tools to import data from other formats. The whole thing is, is a, a dynamic system that preserving any one moment of it isn't as essential to preserving the, the concepts which are taken in and fed out through it. It's, it's a recording kit and it's a presentation aid. It's, it's going to keep going. Um, yeah, now obviously this is a this is a pretty um, broad brush to the whole thing. I don't know. It's a very big problem, and there's obviously a lot more. There's a lot of questions that aren't answered here. Um, I put up there are archival issues, so. I guess that's the idea that we're looking at something where, where does this all go? Uh, we, we're in a world now where we put data up onto the cloud and it doesn't exist anywhere anymore, although obviously it does exist somewhere, but it probably exists in a lot of places. There's a lot that you can go and read about the actual hardware behind all this. Everything that these data stores is backed up in triplicate with default switches, which will make sure that if any one of the different stores goes down, then even if one of the switches goes down, each one of them will be able to back up. So each switch is covered in huge networks of this. So the, the actual like, physical data becomes less important as well. It's, it's duplicated and it's reserved everywhere multiple times. Funding, well, that's always a big question and that's the real killer. But that's an issue with keeping things in boxes and keeping things uh, in space. Space costs money in the real world and in the digital world. It's a difficult question. We're going to have to keep finding different solutions as the environment that we're working in changes. I thought it was interesting the, the talk earlier when he was talking about these pits that were being recut for 4,000 years and it didn't matter that there was no possible way that they could have known what was going on for that. There's this continuity of use. That's a, an incomprehensible continuity, that maybe it's never, maybe it's ambitious to say that I think we can achieve that with digital, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's completely outlandish that people are going to keep, uh, keep using that. Um, there are also definitely going to be other problems, and I'm not sure what they are, and this has been quite a short paper because I was kind of hoping that I could put these ideas out to you guys and see what you thought the issues were that, that was missing here, whether ARC is doing the right thing by looking at these data standards and saying that, well, we want to get things in and out, but at the end of the day, websites will change, have to change. We're developing new things all the time. We're putting in, um, some of you might have seen it, Gary, which is based on the ARC, that there's new 3D environments which are using that data, which we love. And so that is new things are being explored. We don't expect that people are still going to be using tablets in 30 years, but we still quite like them to be using ARCs. So we need to keep changing. Um, so yeah, I would really like to hear what you guys have to say about that. Uh, hopefully you've got some questions. <laughs>